Hello, I'm Gus Mueller. I'm the guy who wrote Acorn, and today I'm going to show you how to make this nifty little flower image here. Now, to start off with, I'm just going to hide this layer because we don't actually need to see what we're going to make. We're going to make it all from scratch right here. Next thing I'm going to do is create a suitably dark background. I'm going to do that by choosing the Edit, Fill Menu Item, and it'll by default it'll use our foreground color, which is black. Um, black is nice. It's not exactly what I want. I'm going to pick a dark blue color that shade back. That looks good. Just click OK. The next thing we want to do is select the uh, circle key tool, key, whatever it's called, over here. And we're going to hold down the shift key and click on our canvas and drag out. And what this does is create the perfect circle for us. Um, we're going to select our move tool next, hold down the option key and click and drag. And this will basically make a copy of our shape. And if we hold down the shift key, It'll, it'll move it around in uh, 45 degree angles. We just want to create another, a petal is what we're doing here. So we're going to overlap the two a little bit like this. We're going to select all. So we've got our, both our shapes selected and we're going to choose the view, quick config popover. Now what we're going to do is click this intersect button right there and we're going to close this guy. And what we have now is our little flower petal which we're going to work with next. What we're going to want to do is create a bunch of these little petals. Now we could copy and paste and arrange things how we want, but that's that's a slow way to do things. So we're going to choose Shape Process Duplicate Shapes. And next we're going to choose Shape. We're going to arrange shapes in a circle, and there's all our flowers, and we're going to click on the Rotate Shapes. Now, it's, it's rotating all the shapes according to the angle as they're going around, but unfortunately everything's sideways. So what we're going to do is then choose the uh, Change Angle. And we're going to change this value to 90 degrees. And ta-da, now we've got a bunch of flower petals. Now we're going to increase the count quite a bit. That looks good. And we're going to add one more shape processor here called randomized colors. We could choose cycle colors, but I've been using that one a lot. So randomized colors is fun. Basically, it gives each shape, you know, its own color. And we can add more shapes. Our colors are there. And we can change the randomness of this. That's fun. Um, one of the things that we can do that's even more interesting is change the blend mode of each shape. And we're going to hit the tilde key, which brings up our uh, quick config popover again, and change the blend mode from normal to screen. And we automatically have some nice looking petals and stuff like that. Now we can uh, click on the canvas here. And that looks pretty awesome. Again, we can change the randomness if we want. Now let's say we wanted this to be a little bit bigger in, in the example I had below. It was a bit bigger. We could go over here, increase our radius, but then we've got that hole in the middle. Um, so what we want to do now is scale each individual shape. So we can shrink them, or we can make them bigger. I want to make them bigger. That looks good. We're going to change the radius down. Actually, I'm going to use this guy. That looks good. We're going to scale it up a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty awesome. Now one thing that's missing that was in our previous graphic that we don't have in this one is a drop shadow. So I'm going to click the little FX button and we're going to bring up the filters palette and I'm going to search for drop shadow just by typing DRO and Acorn will search through the different filters and find it. And I'm going to change the Y offset to zero, the blur radius, I'm going to bump that up some and the opacity all the way up. Now there is a drop shadow there, it's kind of hard to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on the option key and just drag down my drop shadow so it actually duplicates it. So we're going to have a drop shadow on our drop shadow basically. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. So anyway, you can really see the drop shadow now and adjust these values so that it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and close this, save it, and ta-da! We're all done. Now of course our shape processor settings and our filter settings are all non-destructive. Now what does that mean exactly? Well it means we can close our image open it right back up and then we can click on the little P or the FX over here to bring up the shape processor palette and we can just adjust things and save it again and you know, it's non-destructive so if we change our mind later on eh, it's all good we can come back and fix things